What I have here on the screen is the session startup window. And you can see that I have previous sessions that I've already created in the black area. And I can also create a new session or open an existing session. So what we're gonna do in this video is show how to create a new session and also import tracks into Harrison Mixbus 32C. Let's go ahead and click on the new session tab. And now it's gonna give me another page that shows me my templates. And some of these already come with Mixbus by default. But you can see here that I've made a Nate Mixbus template that I based off of a previous session. So in a later video, I'll actually show you how to set up your own personal Mixbus template. But for this video, I'm just gonna stick with an empty template. And I'm not gonna worry about naming the session because also by default, Mixbus 7 allows you to start a session without actually naming it first. So we're just gonna keep it untitled and make sure that you are storing your session in a spot where you normally save your sessions. So on this computer, all my Mixbus sessions are stored in the music folder. But for instance, at my personal studio at the house, I have an external hard drive where I store all my sessions. So you would wanna click on this and maybe click other. You can go in and choose a separate hard drive and wherever you wanna store that. But for the sake of this video, I'm gonna keep this in the music folder and go ahead and click open. All right, now the next window that you're gonna see is your audio MIDI setup, okay? You can't get into a session without going past this first. So as you can see, I'm using the core audio because I'm on a Mac. If you're on a Windows, then you will want to use your Ausio driver for whatever interface that you're using. And for my input device, I'm actually using an AudioFuse Studio for this particular video. But we also have an Apollo Twin that we use. And we have Focusrite. We have an Audient interface here. And we also have a PreSonus. So there's lots of different options here in the office but you just choose whatever audio interface that you have and go with that. Now, as far as sample rate, I use 44.1 for 99% of all my sessions. I know there's different arguments out there on should you use 44, should you use 48, 96, but for me, I just use 44 and move on. It is suggested to have a slightly higher buffer size, and we'll also go into that in later videos, okay? So 1024 for the buffer size and really nothing else needs to be configured. So we're just gonna hit start. So here's a blank mix bus session. And if you are wanting to open this session to maybe import tracks off of a website that gives you multi-tracks, or maybe you're someone who is receiving tracks from a client that you now wanna import into Mixbus to start mixing, then this is definitely the video for you if you're not familiar with Mixbus already. So if we go up to track, we can see that we can add tracks, buses, or VZAs, but for our purposes, we're gonna import. Then you can see that the shortcut for this is Command I. So what I usually like to do, since I've done this many, many times now, is I just hit Command I, and that's gonna bring up Add Existing Media. So I usually download files from the Cambridge multi-track site, or if you're importing tracks from like maybe a Dropbox or a WeTransfer file download, then you would wanna to go to wherever those tracks are. I'm gonna click on Nathan, which is my user. Then I'm gonna to go to Downloads, and I'm gonna find the folder that has the tracks that I want. So let me click on this file here. And we can see that we have a kick all the way through to backing vocals. So let's take a look at some of the other aspects of this window, and then I'll show you how to import these in. So if you click on a track, you can see right over here that we can press play or we can have it auto play and it'll just start playing the track. So let me click on the drum room. And you can also see the sample rate and the format that it's in. So for instance, if you receive some tracks and you see that the sample rate is not the same as what your default settings of your audio interface are, then you may want to stop, go and change your sample rate, and then come back and do the import process again. So that way you know your audio interface is set correctly to the tracks that you have. 
Otherwise, what may happen is if your interface is set to 44.1, but your tracks are at 48, then Mixbus will automatically downsample the 48 sample rate tracks to 44.1. And that's not really a big deal for me. It just takes a little extra time for Mixbus to do that processing. But sometimes your client wants you to keep the tracks in the same sample rate. So just keep that in mind as you're importing these tracks into your session. All right, under the add files area, we can add files as new tracks or we can add them to the source list. Now I'll show you both ways we can do that. Okay, let's just deal with a few sets of tracks right now. Let's just do one through four, which is the kicks and snares. And we're gonna make the mapping one track per file. We can also sequence the files, which means the kick out will be right after the kick in and the snare up and then the snare down. We can put all files on one track or we can merge the files. But most of the time, you're gonna wanna keep it one track per file. As far as MIDI track names, we can name the track by the number, by the name, or by the instrument name. Now, the next section, we can insert at a certain point. So you can insert at session start, you can insert at the playhead, or you can insert at the edit point or a file timestamp. So if it's at session start, let me show you what's gonna happen. And we're just dealing with four tracks right now. So this should be pretty fast. Okay, you can see that this is the start of the session way over here, and we have all of our tracks. And thankfully for us, these tracks are correctly named and we have 01 kick in, 02 kick out, 03 snare up, and 04 snare down. Now, sometimes you receive tracks that aren't named as clearly. And in another video, I will show you exactly my process to go through each track and rename those and organize those. But for now, just be glad that we have tracks that are properly named. All right, let's go ahead and delete these tracks by clicking on the first one, holding down shift, clicking on the last one, right click and remove. And then we're gonna say, yes, remove them. All right, now we're in a session. I'm actually gonna move my start up here. They'll give us some room before the actual waveform starts. And now we're gonna hit Command I. And now this insert, at session start once again, and you'll see that the tracks will import right where the session start is. All right, now for another example, let's insert at the playhead. So I'm gonna move my playhead to measure 40, and now let's see what this looks like when I import the tracks. Now I'm in a, another session, just to make sure that our source list is cleared up. But now let's actually choose add files to source list. And it doesn't really matter what the insert at is set to because all we're worried about is adding files to the source list. So let's take these four tracks and let's click import. And it might have not looked like it did a whole lot, but it definitely imported those. So now I'm going to hit Shift L and choose the source tab. Now you can see our four tracks. Now what we can do at this point is take each track and we'll just drag it in. You also wanna be careful that they line up, which could be a little tedious. Sometimes you wanna work this way and other times you don't. But if you're working off of a template, for instance, that you've already made off of a previous session, then this might be a good option for you because you already have all your tracks made. You just want to simply drag and drop from the source list over to your certain tracks. And lastly, let's show you how to simply just drag and drop files into your session. So I'm going to open up a folder here on my desktop and I'm going to go here and just click on some audio files. And I'm gonna highlight all these and then simply drag and drop into the session. So wherever I put my cursor, that's where they're gonna drop. So if I could drop it here, that's where they're gonna go in. And you can see that the start marker starts at the beginning of the region. And then there's also an end marker at the end of the region. So that should get you going for starting a new session and also importing your own tracks.
So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below and go ahead and give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw. If you're new here to the channel, be sure to subscribe down below and click that bell. And in the meantime, I'm Nathan from Harrison Consoles, teaching you to mix faster and sound better. Mm -hmm.